BMW i3 was designed from the ground up to be one of the more unique vehicles on the road. But how reliable is it? Simple Car Guy here, and in today's video, I want to talk about some common problems you can expect on the BMW i3. We'll discuss the difference between the battery-only version and the range extender, reliability, best years to buy, what to look for when buying yours, and how to avoid some of these issues if you already own one. You have to remember though, this isn't a regular EV, hybrid, or a gas car. It has bespoke parts that were made specifically for the i3 and only shared with the i8 in most cases. Overall, it's one of the most reliable EVs on the market, but every car has its issues, especially experimental one like this i3. And before I talk specifics, let me explain how the video is structured. We'll talk about the most common issues first, and then not as common ones, but still something to pay attention to. Specifically, we'll discuss mechanical issues, electronic, cosmetic, and range extender specific issues. You can use chapters to jump around if you like. The most common problem across the BMW i3 range has to be the 12 volt battery, which is located just right there. And judging from how many people have complained about this and how many forum posts you can find on this issue, the battery will prematurely fail about every three years. And it's not unusual to see people with only 50,000 miles on their third battery. It's recommended replacing it before it gives out as a failing battery will leave you stranded, needing a flatbed as the car will not turn on. Interestingly, the 95 and 120 amp hour cars have a different part number for the 12 volt battery and seem to be a little bit more reliable, but still affected. Another very common issue is the weak motor mounts that can fail abruptly causing the car to vibrate and make lots of noise in the back. The motor mount we're talking about is located somewhere deeper in there, and I will make a video on how to check yours, but this can happen on cars even under 50,000 miles, and usually more so on cars that have been driven hard or on bad roads. Snapped off bolts on the motor mounts are not unusual either. BMW has since replaced the plastic motor mounts, upgraded the bolts to metal ones, and reprogrammed the cars to have less initial torque during the repair campaign. And on all newer cars, if this recall has not been done in your car, it's a good idea to get it checked out. Common across the range are also a few suspension issues. Most common one being the dust covers on the front dampers that are located just right there. In fact, I've had to replace those when lowering my i3 in this video. This isn't a critical or dangerous issue, but water and dirt will prematurely wear out your dampers, resulting in an unstable ride and more expensive repair. The dried out rubber can also get into the bump stops, causing an annoying squeak. Failing strut bearings are also a common failure point and require the upper strut mounts to be replaced. Bigger problems can be caused by a failed AC compressor though. This may not be as common as the first three items, but it gets expensive, very expensive. If you happen to be one of the very unlucky ones where the AC compressor completely failed for you, it can cause the cooling fan to implode, sending shrapnel through the high voltage battery pack cooling loop. Yes, on this car, the AC compressor runs both the HVAC system as well as the cooling of the high voltage battery. So the repairs can be over $8,000 as the battery has to be basically removed from the vehicle. And as you can imagine, that's an expensive repair. And then the cooling lines have to be replaced as well. This seems to be more common on the 2017 or older i3s, but has happened on newer ones as well. It's recommended to get your HVAC system checked out as soon as you hear any clicky or metallic noise coming from the AC compressor. Replacing just the compressor can be a cheaper $3,000 job. A much cheaper issue that has come up on many BMW i3s is the leaky windshield washer pump, which is located just right there. I've had this happen on mine, and I just used some epoxy to fix the leak. My simple fix has lasted a few months now, but of course, you can simply replace the entire pump for only $20. To prevent this, make sure not to get any debris into the washer fluid tank, and clean out the clogged washer jets if they're not performing as expected. Switching over to electronics, other than the 12 volt battery we talked about earlier, there are a few other common issues to watch out for. One of the most annoying ones in colder climates is the heated seats going out. A lot of people use their heated seats much more in this car than in, in a regular car to gain some range in those colder climates, so sometimes the elements in the seats get damaged and cause a short circuit 
or the thermometer goes bad, causing the seats to overheat and shut off. A few common but rather minor issues have to do with the LEDs going out in the climate control panel, where it starts to flicker or completely burns out and a faulty reverse camera where it becomes a little blurry. The charge port door solenoid can also fail and cause the charge door not to open. Usually it starts with a grinding noise during the operation. So if yours doesn't sound like this and there's more of a grinding noise, it probably has to be looked into. I've had a hard time opening the charge door in the snow on my car and had to readjust it a little bit as well. In some cases, the solenoid does not fail, but the door has to be recalibrated. So that's something to remember as well. On a more serious note, there was a problem with the internal components of the airbags that were not properly assembled by BMW. This resulted in the airbag deploying in a low speed collision on the 2014 and 2015 models. Similarly, the passenger restraint system on the same year cars has a tendency to show a warning even when the passenger is buckled in. While the next one is not very common, it is also serious and surprisingly only occurs on the 2018 and newer models. There have been a few reports of the failed KLE and EME modules due to bad solder joints. KLE module is responsible for charging your vehicle and EME is the electronic motor controller that if fails shuts down the high voltage to the motor and stopping the car in its tracks. If there are any signs of sudden loss of power on your BMW i3, the dealer will replace these at no cost. BMW i3 also has a few issues with the quality of the materials that have been used. A lot of these were advertised as eco-friendly and good for the environment. And it's mostly true, but it also means that some of these materials don't last as long as we would expect from a BMW. I have personally noticed poor quality interior on my car as it wears out very quickly. Granted, mine was neglected and abused, but looking online for used interior parts like this door card showed very similar wear and tear at only 50,000 miles. The DECA fabric appears to stain so easily as well, even with just water. Others have also pointed out that the antenna deteriorates in hot climates. As you can see, mine has basically lost all of its protective rubber coating, as well as the rubber trim along the top edge of the windshield becoming crumbly or sticky. Door seals have a very similar issue. Whether it's the design of the car or quality of the seal, it wears out much sooner than any other BMW I have owned and others have reported the same. Even stating that water has been collecting in the lower CRP frame due to poor insulation. The door handles are also of a strange design and not often used on BMWs. So they get a little loose and wobbly just like that over time. A more serious issue on the outside has to be the carbon fiber roof. Those that park their car outside in a very hot climate will start seeing bubbling and peeling appear after four or five years, just like this one and this one right here. This is a known issue with other carbon fiber roofs like on the M3 and the M4, and the best solution to protect the clear coat and the roof panel itself is to get it vinyl wrapped. Lastly, let's talk about the range extender specific problems. Of course, with the addition of a scooter engine in the rear over there, there is more complexity and more problems to expect. Luckily, none of them are very serious, and the most common one is the fuel door that gets stuck and will not open unless you use the release cord under the hood. This happens almost entirely because of the failed fuel tank pressure sensor, and the reason that that sensor fails is because owners are trying to add just a little bit more fuel after the pump stops. So do not overfill your gas tanks on these cars and allow the pump to auto stop. Fuel pump relay is another issue on the range extender and can cause the auxiliary unit not to start and light up the check engine light. As with other gas engines, you have to do proper maintenance or risk things like misfires on one of the two cylinders. In addition to maintenance, you must use high quality premium fuel as it can sit in there unused for weeks at a time. Most importantly though, change your oil once a year if you use your range extender. If you don't want to have the camshaft bearings and other things start wearing out and failing inside the engine. Before I finish up this video, there are a couple of things I wanted to mention that aren't really problems, but good to know. If you notice, BMW i3s run on these very skinny tires. Great for rolling resistance, 
terrible for wear and tear. These tires wear out in as little as 10,000 miles if you are an aggressive driver. Worse is that they are unique to this vehicle, so they are hard to find, can be expensive, and usually with a choice of one. 20 inch wheels look the best in my opinion, like the ones I have on this car, but they are also the biggest offenders and tend to go out taking out the wheel as well on a very bad pothole. The second non-problem problem is that the 3G cell network has been turned off in US, and thus the early cars no longer have real-time traffic, remote starts, or app access. This is a huge blow for fairly new cars. For that and many other reasons, I would recommend a 2017 or newer BMW i3 with the range extender. These do not have any big real issues and offer a great range with larger batteries and of course they have 4G network support. In 2018 you also get a facelift and a more sporty i3S model. Older models are still a great buy and a lot of times a bargain as most of the issues have been fixed under warranty or through recalls. I have been really enjoying my BMW i3 and I would recommend it to anyone looking for a quirky, fun and unique car that is no longer in production. And now that you know everything you need to know about reliability, you would be amazed how many hidden features this car has. So make sure to watch this video by clicking right here. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.